Oh, yeah, right. I love okay. him. Justin wants to be an actor. Okay. And so, Justin, you ask him your questions first since you want to be an actor. How does it feel like when you, um, when you first get a role? Okay, what was the question? How does it first, how does it feel like when you first get a role? Uh, let's see. I mean, I was excited. When you first get a role, you, you know, you haven't done anything, you look forward to it, and you finally, you know, accomplish your first goal as an actor, it feels really great. And it encourages you to do more. Next question, Justin. What are some tips of what you should do when you get the role? Hmm. Um, the first thing I do is thoroughly read the script and, and, and really look at my character and see where my character starts and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do an interview now, okay? Okay. And then um, focus on the character to see where the character goes from the beginning to the end. And then I think about how I can play each scene individually and how I can make each scene connect so that I have a beginning, middle, and end to that character. Okay. Mm -hmm. Third question. And the last question is, what does it feel like when, when your TV show season Sometimes that that's an interesting question because oh you lost my that's an interesting question it's on the floor. because um it's it's good and it's bad sometimes it feels like it's bad because one thing one thing that happens when you when you work on a television show you kind of develop relationships and it's like a family because you come to work every day you work with the same people whether it's the people in the crew or the people that you work with as actors in front of you, the directors, producers, and all of them. So you develop relationships. And most of the time, in most cases, it's fun. You know, I mean, if you act and you do things that you love, which I love to act, going to work is fun. Even though it's hard work, it's still fun. And so when you do a show for any length of time, it really is like developing a, another family. So when the show is then called off the air, you know, it's a little, you know, it's a little bittersweet because you know you'll miss everyone. But then again, you know that every time you do a show or anything, a movie, it all has to end at a certain point. You know, none, none of those jobs last forever. They may last a long time, but it never lasts forever. But if you do films, you'll get used to it because most films done in eight weeks, 12 weeks. So you have that family, those friends for that short amount of time, and then you go into the next project. So that's just the nature of the business. So you learn to deal with it. And then you always have people that you can keep in contact with. Okay. Yeah. And it's important to do that too because um, you know a lot of acting and and, um, and in that business is is maintaining relationships. That's why it's very important that you conduct yourself as a, a, a good person in your business because while you're working, if you have a good business ethic, uh, a good way of being with people and and executing your job, doing well at what you do, working hard at what you do as an actor, not taking it lightly, but taking your job seriously, then people respect you for what you do, and they'll be happy to work with you in the future. And that goes with anything that you do. Whether you're a carpenter, a lawyer, whatever, a doctor, while you're working with people, you put your best foot forward, you put your best effort forward, and then you get the type of results that you want. You got it? Yeah. Anything else? That was it? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. three questions? Mm -hmm. right. Okay, sure. My turn. I'm more advanced than you, Justin. Those are good questions. Who, Justin? Yeah. Um, so your career is acting, right? One of them. Okay, so then what is your career <laughs> in that case? Well, you know, I started I started as an actor. Well, but now um, I write and produce as well. I still act, but I write and produce as well. Okay. 
Um, how did you start your career? Oh, uh, let's see. Um, my start was as a stuntman. Um, my first film, well, I was an extra in a few films in New York at that time. Films were being done in New York. My first film was a film called Beach, Beach Street, which was a, a film, a first, the first rap film actually. <coughs> and um, I played just an extra role. But being on that set kind of gave me the idea that I wanted to, to continue to do that. Later, um, I was chosen because of my martial arts skills to audition for The Last Dragon, which was a martial art movie that was done by Motown um, back in the 80s, I believe. Um, and although I didn't get the main role, I ended up getting a stunt role where I did martial arts on the film. And that's what got me into the Screen Actors Guild, which is the union. So that's how I started in the business. And from there, I went to, to actually acting. Okay. My next question is, where did the height of your career take place? Ah, you know, I've had a lot of heights, you know. I mean, I can't, I tell you, there, there's some special moments. Like, um, one of my most special moments was when I did my first Broadway play. Um, you know, a few years into my um into my um, quest, uh, I landed a play, which uh, at that time a lot of the young actors that you may know now were going for, and I ended up getting it out of nowhere. And it was uh, playing this, actually, you know what's funny about it, the film now has just come out with Denzel starring in the film, Fences. That's, uh, oh, yes. that's my favorite. Yeah, I did Fences on Broadway. I actually did the play long before the movie oh, in the wow. 80s, yeah. And so um, I started out, it was a great play, and got to, to work with the most fantastic writer in August Wilson, who was hands-on and was always there. So we get to, to spend time with the great August Wilson. Um, uh, my gosh, he was... Lloyd Richards was, was the director, who was a, a prodigy from Yale, who directed the first when you talk about black history, he directed, he was probably the first black director on Broadway, as far as I know. He directed the, A Raisin in the Sun, with, uh, written by Lorraine Hansberry, and Sidney <laughs> Poitier and Ruby Dee were starring in that. So he actually directed them in the play when he was out of Yale, um, a young Yale graduate, from what I understand. So I think he was in his early 20s. And um, he then became the artistic director at Yale University repertory and so um, he was our mentor he he took all of August Wilson's plays and he brought them to Broadway he, he, he workshopped them at Yale and then he brought them to Broadway which was a tremendous accomplishment at the time because I don't know if uh, you know but back then Broadway and it's still called today the Great White Way so there never was a lot of black representation on Broadway but during that period which I would say it was a height amazing heights because in, during that period there were probably a handful of black plays on Broadway at the same time. Two of them were August Wilson plays. We had Joe Turner's coming on around the corner. From us we had uh, James Earl Jones and, and, and Mary Alice playing in one. We had Gospel of Colonus across the street with Morgan Freeman. We had Whoopi Goldberg and Sarah Fina. Everybody. We had Angie Bassett and um, Delroy Lindo and um, Joe Turner's coming on and another play we had the tap dance kid around the corner you know with Hidden Battle I think Alfonso R Riviero which you would know from the Fresh Prince yes yeah and um, I think that was all the plays at the time but we had a lot of black play plays on Broadway I don't think it's ever been like that since so um, <laughs> sorry I had to fix that one Okay, my next question would have to. Oh, Is he talking? Hold on. Hold on. I, what is that? That's the that's the, that's the that's Oh, okay. Um, the next question is, what was your favorite character in a film that you played in? Okay. Um, like I said, in that play, Offenses was incredible for me. And I, that Corey playing Corey was an amazing thing to me because James Earl Jones, who was the star of that play, he actually was an inspiration for me becoming an actor. And so probably 10 years after I was inspired by him, 
I was on stage with him playing opposite him as his son. Wow. So I'm going to tell you, that's the power of dreaming big and envisioning what you want. Because I'm going to tell you, at that age, when I saw him act in a movie, I remember the feeling that I had watching him. And I said to myself, I really want to be able to move people like that. I want to share my energy with people like that and have people feel that way. And I, I tested myself, and I believed that I could do it. And I went for it when it seemed like, you know, it couldn't happen. And, um, and like I said, maybe about 10 years later, I was on stage sitting opposite him and, uh, and actually acting and had the benefit of That being, had to be a great dream, Coach. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? And then at the, and at the end of the day, I got a nod of approval from somebody who inspired me. I said, that was a great job. So, yeah. So that's that's Something what I'm trying to get forward to. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, where did you attend college? Uh, I went to Howard University. Oh. Yeah. But uh, but I did not study um, acting there. I actually studied architecture. What are you odd about? That's, that, that's my school. That's oh, okay. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, I'm not going there. I'm going to Coker. I can't go outside. Oh, okay. that's fine. I just was asking you. I was just the next question was what was your major? Oh uh, yeah, architecture. Yeah, architecture. But um, I worked for an interior design firm. Um, uh, after I returned to New York, I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. I mean, I, I enjoyed it, but I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. So I, I decided at that point that I wanted to do something that I love, and that's when I set out to, to act. Okay. Yeah. So what? So you said you worked with the firm, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of design did you used to do? What I used to do was, it wasn't an architectural firm, it was an architectural woodwork firm. So what I did was, I, I, I didn't end up doing actual architectural designs, but the job that was available for me was to estimate the cost of special architectural woodwork. And, and then basically... Um, so like stuff like Magnolia? No. Like what? Like you said, like it's good work, right? Yeah. So something like magnolia, like you would price them. Yeah, 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 like mahogany or or yeah, or birch, elmwood, you know, all these special woods. And basically, what what you would do is create counter space, create for businesses mostly. Like I did the Asprey window and trunk towel back then. You know, and so I did the bid for that. And so basically, what a woodwork, or architectural woodwork, would do at that time, our estimator was we, we would give the price, like say they wanted, you know, um, you know, a uh, hundred of these desks or, or, or linear feet of these desks, I would give the estimation of what it would cost to make a conference room desk or a, a concierge desk and stuff like that with special details and stuff like that. So that was my job. Okay. So did you ever have a, a doubt during the time when you were beginning the acting scene? Like, was there a time where you just was like, no, I never had a time where I said, okay, I've had it, but I definitely had times where I said, wow, this is rough, rough. But then again, I didn't go into it thinking that it was going to be easy. See, so yeah, I was very real with myself because, I mean, looking at myself, coming from where I came from, I came from a rough area in Bronx, New York. Um, you know, there weren't very many people I knew that were doing it. I knew one person who was like a, 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 a uncle to a friend of mine, um, in the neighborhood, and he actually did small roles in movies at the time, and so he was an aspiring actor, a lot older than me, named Damian Leek. And, so, and when I first saw him, um, you know, on screen, that was something that let me know that it could be done. <laughs> it could be done, you know. And so, but I didn't have any illusions of thinking it would happen overnight or anything like that. So I had fun. I had, I had fun, you know. Per, you know, pursuing it. You know, because what you have to think about is when you look at anything, it's about the journey. You know, it, it, including life. It's not about the, the, the just the achievement, but it's the process that you go through. And so, when you go through this process, you gotta you gotta embrace the process. You gotta understand that, that this work is a part of it, and the auditions are a part of it. And you won't get every audition. If you get some auditions, that's fine. You know. But you have to develop an attitude because people always say to me, 
you know, how do you deal with the rejection? Oh, you get rejected so much. How do you deal with the rejection? Does it affect you and then be doubt myself. yourself? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, but no, you can't doubt yourself because what you have you to understand is that job was never yours to lose. Yeah. It was never yours to lose. <coughs> but what you did do is you got respected enough to be invited to, to have an opportunity. And the best thing you can do because let me tell you, as a person who's on the other side now, as a producer, you can sit there, you can watch people all day, and there'll be 10 fantastic people, but you can only choose one. And every one of them may be fantastic for a different reason. But this is only for one particular person. So you pick that person, but it doesn't mean that the other nine were fantastic and that you don't want to work with them. It just means they weren't right for this particular role. So when you don't get a job, what you got to understand is, if you don't get it, it wasn't for you. But what you do is, when you go in there, you do your very best. You make sure that when you audition, that you leave no stone unturned. You do everything as far as your acting is concerned and, and, and the proper way that you carry yourself and, and, and respectfully carry yourself, that you let them see who you are. You shine in that moment because everyone in that room is rooting for you, whether you believe it or not. So when you come in there, you own it, you shine, you let you let everything out, let it, and then let it let it let it be where it is. And what happens is this: they'll either choose you or not. But if you do your best, then one thing they will say is that person's terrific. You know, maybe when we get something else, we'll uh, we'll give them a call. I needed that today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I needed that today because I'm supposed to be going to for an audition. Okay. Um, for the voice. Um, oh, really? Okay. What was it? Saturday? I, I forgot. Saturday. Yeah. Saturday. So what would Go you tell um, kids who are in these low communities? How would you inspire them? What would you do? Like, what would you tell them? Like, in this, like, in this particular community, you know, there are kids that walk around the streets and, you know, they want to be something, but they don't, they mm -hmm. don't have anybody to look up to. So what would you I would say, say that... God has given every single one of us something that makes us specially unique. There's no one we're like snowflakes. There's no two of us in our life. There's always something that's special within everyone. And I would say find that thing that makes you special. The thing that, you know, that you love to do and do your very best to master that. I would say be a leader, not a follower. Be able to stand on your own. It's good to have community and friends, but when influences start to take you in a direction that you know is not right, that most of us know right from wrong, that you have the strength and the fortitude to be able to say, that's not a direction I want to go. One of the things that I had to do as a young man coming up in the Bronx, I had a lot of influences around me. A lot of my friends wanted to rob, steal, you know, some of them dealt drugs, some, you know, some of them got involved in all kinds of things. And uh, I had respect for them, I liked a lot of them, but when they went left, I went right. And I had to have the fortitude to be able to say, you know, I don't need to follow them. Because a lot of times, a lot of the problems that we have for both young men and women is that, you know, <coughs> they want to follow the crowd. And it's hard to, 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 to look your peers in the eyes and not have them respect you. But what's more important is that you respect yourself, you know, and that, that, you, that you do what you know is right, you know. Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah. I think that's all my questions. Yeah. I'm very inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I need inspiration today. <laughs> good, so I good. think that's it. <coughs> okay, good, good. Jesse, you have any more questions? Um, you sure? Mm -hmm. no. I'm trying to think.